Today, we're going to be going over why we zeroed some of our own players in Home Kingdom and why you might want to as well. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Listen, it's almost October. So, you know, we had to break out the uh, the butter beer. OK, everybody knows that autumn, the fall Halloween season, it's Harry Potter season. That's really what it is. OK, it's become Harry Potter season ever since like 2001. I actually got this at the Harry Potter store in New York and it's just it's too sweet but it's also delicious at the same time anyway what you're gonna be looking at in this video is footage from my live stream a couple of days ago near the end of that live stream my members of my Alliance were rallying one of our own players in the kingdom and look I feel like if you're a new player right you're a free to play you've been playing for three months you, you don't really you know you, you like the game and you enjoy it maybe you just started getting into some content right you stumbled across my channel maybe you don't really understand why you might want to zero a friendly player right because the player that we zero in this video is you know i haven't talked to them but i'm sure they're a nice guy you know i've seen their name show up in sunset canyon you know i see them out in the map in the open field killing barbs right so they play the game right they play the game they spend money in the game and it sucks to get zeroed right it sucks to get zeroed so if you're a new player you might be thinking well why would you zero your own people right like why don't you just save that fighting for kvk like isn't it counterintuitive to be lowering the powerful players in your own kingdom when you could be using them to fight other players in other kingdoms and 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 kind of you know get actual value out of their accounts which you know that makes sense but the problem with that is how kvk matchmaking is actually done in rise of kingdoms now i don't know the exact specifics of the matchmaking formula but what we do know is that the power of your kingdom is part of that formula which sounds fair right it sounds fair that you know you generally would want to be paired up with kingdoms more or less your power because otherwise you know if you got really unlucky you could have one imperium with a bunch of baby kingdoms and they just can't do anything and if that's their first kvk or their first at least heroic anthem kvk they're gonna find that super frustrating and annoying and a lot of those players might just quit so it's in lilith's best interest did i just say beth beth why is my tongue not working today oh hang on i'm getting a phone call um Oh, okay. Sorry. It was your mom. She said my tongue does actually work. It's fine. Anyway, it's in Lilith's best interest to have matchmaking somewhat fair because then people feel like they have a chance. And if people feel like they have a chance, then they fight. And if they fight, they probably end up spending. So it makes sense, right? It makes sense that that would be the case but power isn't exactly the best number to use when matchmaking. And I know that the matchmaking system doesn't just pick a bunch of kingdoms with the same power and put them together, right? Because, you know, if a kingdom has been in four KVKs and they lost every single one of them, well, Hey, may maybe they should go up against somebody else. Right? So there's tons of other factors I'm sure in the matchmaking, but power is at least part of the conversation. So what happens when you have a player with a lot of power who doesn't really participate in kvk and maybe it's of no fault of their own right maybe they just work a lot and they just can't really be online during kvk or they miss some fights or whatever the case might be right maybe you've got you know a life outside of rise of kingdoms i know i can't imagine it either but you know you got a wife you got kids things like that okay it makes sense and and real life sometimes gets in the way but sometimes uh you know after your second or your third kvk of not participating to the standards of your power as you know established by the leadership in your kingdom well then okay maybe it's time that you either migrate out or you lower your power willingly because then it's just not fair to the other people in the kingdom right because if there's a lot of players with a lot of power that aren't really participating as much as they should then that kingdom might actually go up against much stronger kingdoms in kvk which decreases their odds of actually winning the kvk unless they could pull some really nice diplomacy out of their hat and you know get an alliance or whatever but even still they're not going to be like getting the best rewards possible they're not going to go in and be the alliance that actually wins so there's definitely a conversation to be had there about okay what do you do about players that you don't think are participating to the standards of the kingdom well one solution is to zero them now 
Now it's, it's not that simple. Okay. You shouldn't just go around and be like, man, we lost KVK. Who are we going to take it out on? Because that just doesn't look good. Okay. It just doesn't look good to everyone looking in on your kingdom. They're like, wow, they're just pointing fingers and the whole place is going to crumble. Right. Because then the morale of everybody else in the kingdom who isn't a mega whale goes down. Cause it's like, oh my God, what if that's me next? I just spent nine months building this account and I could just get zero if I'm not on enough for a KVK. So you want to be really careful when it comes to zeroing players in your kingdom. Okay. Let me make that abundantly clear. There should be no finger pointing. There should be hard evidence and data from multiple KVKs. And it has to be a pattern and a trend before you can even justify zeroing a player. Okay. Now, besides that, you also should talk to that player, right? You should be like, Hey, what's going on? You know, we, we had a couple passes. You weren't there. We were fighting in the open field. You weren't there. You know, it would have been really nice if we had like your Guan Leo out in the open field, just doing a little bit of work, you know, just one March to a ruins once in a while or to the altars, right? You know, that, that would be helpful. But you know, if players just don't contribute and again I, I i'm not talking specifically about the player that we zeroed here because i can't emphasize this enough i i have not talked to them okay and and i'm and i like to give people the benefit of the doubt they're probably an awesome person and honestly who am i to talk right i don't even have that many kill points for my own power okay so let's just be let's just keep it 100 right with you guys okay i have no shame all i'm saying right is that you should at least talk to the player and be like okay hey what's going on this is your second or your third kvk where we thought you would participate you said you'd participate you didn't participate you kind of took up an alliance slot and it was it's a whole thing right so you always want to give them the option of migrating out you wanted to say hey look look it, it is what it is the, your, your power is not meeting our expectations you know we we are going to give you a couple of weeks to get passport pages so you can migrate out before the next kvk begins right and i think that's fair now you know sometimes those players either don't speak the language that the majority of the kingdom does so the translation isn't very good and maybe they think that's hostile or a threat or something like that you know or maybe there's another excuse after an excuse and at that point it's like okay what do you do about these players you give them the options it is what it is sometimes you got to just take matters into your own hands and to be fair that's not what the case was with the rally that you're watching in this video okay this player knew that they were going to get zeroed they they had they had their warnings you know everything it, it is what it is right they knew what was happening and they thought okay well if i'm gonna migrate out i might as well get some kills for it i might as well get some deads for it right and if i get zeroed well then hey it'll be cheaper for me to migrate out anyway. Right. And I'm pretty sure that that's the route that this player took. Okay. So this player knew what was going to happen. Okay. And that was not the case for some of the other players that we ended up zeroing after our last KBK. Now, mind you, we won KBK. Okay. We won KVK. Whether you win or you lose, it's important to manage the power in your kingdom. If you've come to the conclusion that your kingdom has more or less like 15 billion power worth of fighting, right? But it's total power is like 20 billion. Well, Hey, that could make your next KVK really difficult, right? Because you're going to go up against other kingdoms with 20 billion power. And maybe they actually have 18 billion of that power of active players that are ready to fight. Right. And so again, whether you win or lose, it's still worth doing a little bit of data collection, right. And figuring out who's participating, who's not, who hasn't participated for three KBKs. And then from there, you can decide who are we going to zero or give the option to leave. So again, you want to be very careful about this stuff and where it gets really messy. And I've seen this happen in other kingdoms is where there's a group of players. Maybe there's five players, right. And three of them are fighters. One of them is on the fence and one of them is a mega whale that doesn't do anything. Right. But they stick around because everyone else likes them. They join voice chats together. They're funny. They're cool people. Maybe they know each other in real life, whatever the case might be. Okay. You got these group of guys and some of them, you know, they're good. They're fine. They're fighters, but their friend just isn't. And he's the whale and he's the problem, right? That's where things can get messy because then it's like, okay, leadership in the kingdom knows that we got to zero this guy because he's useless. He's spending a lot of money. Great. But he's not doing anything. He's raising our total power of the kingdom. And you know, it is what it is. Right. Uh, and so that's the problem where it's like, okay, if you try to zero that guy, well now his fighter friends are going to be upset that you want to zero him because Hey, that's their friend. And to I totally get that. Right. And now you're going to lose three 
fighters because those guys are you know they're actually participating but they don't want you to zero their friend so it's like that that's usually uh you know if i'm being real with you that, that's how sometimes civil wars start okay uh because you know that that those players will then tell their alliance like oh my god the leaders of the kingdom want to destroy us and then the leaders of that alliance are like well if you're gonna if you're gonna zero our player well then you're you're at war with all of us then and then boom the kingdom's pretty much over right so you want to be super cautious okay about doing this and use your diplomacy just 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 talk to people okay try to figure things out before you have to zero a player or worst case scenario at least let them know like hey you're gonna get zeroed okay but again if they're if they're not part of a group okay and they haven't pulled their weight forever and they're not leaving and they're not listening well then it's time to just you know when they all uh, when they log off they wake up with half an account you know what i'm saying anyway i figured i would just make this video clarifying this for maybe some newer players or maybe if you're in a newer kingdom and you're one of the leaders of that kingdom right and you're new to the game and you're trying to figure out how do we manage this kingdom properly well here's a here's something that a lot of content creators maybe don't talk about too much okay zeroing your own players that's not really a popular thing to do uh but you know if you're a leader in your kingdom this is probably a a, a path you're going to cross at some point so i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of perspective as to probably the best ways to do it and also what some of the outcomes could be because civil war is a virus for a kingdom it really will it's really bad it, the future of the kingdom is pretty bleak once you have some some uh, big civil war battles go down so i realized as i was editing this video that i didn't really go over the war reports so let's go ahead and do that now okay this was the first report that you saw okay you saw these reports we didn't go over them all right so this is the first rally that hit the city we got your boy rk okay he's gonna be super happy that he gets featured in this video i already know he is and listen okay he showed us that he didn't have equipment on let's be real all right look, look at these buffs we, we know your boy had equipment on okay he's trying to flex we know the real deal all right so we lost 3.4 million power versus lord raven man lost 12.5 million power rest in peace to these troops unfortunately the Wu and the Isun Sin were not maxed which I was confused about here so we maxed the first skill second skill you know it is what it is these commanders are not maxed so it didn't really go over well as you can see we got 427,000 deads to his 1.6 million deads um that's crazy 375,000 filled the hospital right away we're not in kvk so there it is dude okay the normal attack encounter i don't know if you guys were paying attention but the normal encounter attack damage on attila takeda is it's just insane it will always be insane okay and attila takeda is still so good for hitting cities man it's just so good at getting good trades when you're hitting cities okay xy chandra yes it's good okay but this is it's still great okay Attila Takeda is still great for hitting cities the next rally was Merpati. I don't know if I said that right. I'm sorry. Okay. Merp came in here, hit him with the Guan Yu Leo. Just wanted to try out this combination and it did okay. It did, it did fine, right? We lost 1.1 to his 4.1. So severely wounded. So we, he healed down because he wanted to just get some more kills out of this, right? So healed down. Um, and then, you know, fine trade here. It is what it is. We got to take a look at these buffs. I don't think we saw the buffs before, but this is an expertise to Guan Leo. Okay. Both are expertise absolutely savage guan yu uh, you know guan yu just chunks things down with that aoe which is why you see um fewer deads but it just it just does well in the open field and then finally the last report that i have but obviously you saw some swarms going on i think there was another rally that happened as well uh because you know obviously he continued to heal down in between these rallies so this report was um again rk with the attila takeda favoring those really positive trades that you want to get there right obviously it's nice to test things but also you you want to lose as few troops as you possibly can about 800,000 deads for this rally 373,000 in the hospital man that's crazy stuff right here and then obviously the troop buffs I believe I don't think anything really changed here with the Attila Takeda I don't think he moved like equipment or anything like that uh but yeah totally crazy stuff here and this first rally wasn't even full can you believe that that was crazy the second rally was the third rally was as well but that first rally man totally nuts couldn't believe that it wasn't full anyway if you guys missed this zeroing that means you missed my live stream which means you're either not subscribed to this channel you didn't join my discord you didn't follow me over on twitch okay so you want to make sure you do all that stuff because we're going to be doing more live streams very very soon uh today is saturday night 
I'm gonna try to live stream sometime on Monday uh, no promises because I got a lot of stuff going on but I would like to stream on Monday that's the plan so if you don't want to miss that then make sure you subscribe to the channel follow me on Twitch and turn on notifications I, I'm usually not that adamant about notifications because I know how annoying they are but if you haven't done that yet and, and you forgot about it go, go ahead and do that drop a like on the video also while you're down there just drop a like on the video it helps the video a ton in the search results in the algorithm okay the YouTube algorithm is an uphill battle that I've been fighting my entire life pretty much not to be dramatic but like it's pretty much the bane of my existence so like the video it helps me out a ton my social media links are in the description as well as my discord so follow me on all those places instagram twitter facebook all that stuff there's also a link down below to download rise of kingdoms for free for your pc and if you guys don't have butter beer you may want to try some gamer subs okay you got we got the cool little purple sign back there we can there's a code down below you'll save some money with code omni and i've been drinking it almost every single day it kind of gets me through the work day you know what i'm saying it's cheaper than energy drinks anyway with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been an omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace